Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about who Panorama Consulting is. We are a niche consulting firm that focuses exclusively on the ERP market, and we provide three service offerings to our clients. First is ERP evaluation and software selection. Second is implementation project management. And third is organizational change and benefits realization. We have experience with over 100 different ERP packages, including Tier 1, Tier 2, and niche uh, industry solutions. We have depth and focus in a number of industry verticals, including manufacturing, distribution, supply chain, and high growth companies. And we are vendor independent and neutral, so we are not aligned with any of the software vendors. We don't sell software and we're not uh, financially tied to the vendors in any way. So today's presentation and our research that we'll discuss here today is very much a technology agnostic view of them. Similarly, our experience with ERP software vendors is equally diverse. Uh, we work, as I said before, with Tier 1 solutions like SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft. In addition, we also have helped clients select and implement other solutions like uh, Tier 2 solutions such as Infor, Sage, IFS, Consona, etc. Now, in terms of the ERP report that we published in early 2010, this was a study that we conducted, an independent study of over 1,600 different organizations across the globe, companies that range from small organizations all the way and up to multinational, uh, multi-billion dollar organizations. And the participants in this study selected and implemented a variety of ERP solutions, including Tier 1, 2, and 3 solutions, as well as software as a service, on-premise solutions, and niche offerings as well. And we conducted this study between 2005 and 2009. We also conducted uh, the study across geographic regions. So as you'll see on this slide, uh, there's a very broad um, range of companies across the globe that have participated in the study. So the first summary metric from our study that's worth looking at is uh, budget and cost. Um, as you'll see, we, we compared uh, the data that we uh, published in 2010 with the data we published in 2008 just to show how the trends have uh, projected in, in, uh, cur in the past into the current state. Um, you'll see that uh, in 2010, just over half or 51% of companies in the study went over budget. and uh, that essentially states that they've spent more money than they expected. And total cost as a percentage of revenue was 6.9%, which is a slight decrease uh, from 2008 when that number was right at 9%. And as we'll discuss here in a few minute, moments, um, that decrease in cost is, is a welcome improvement to ERP initiatives across the globe, but there have been some downsides and some consequences of those uh, reduced costs. One of those consequences from the reduced cost is a failure to realize at least 50% of business benefits. And you'll see that uh, two thirds or 67% of organizations failed to realize the benefits they expected. And this is a slight increase from uh, 2008, uh, which suggests, and, and based on our qualitative analysis, suggests that uh, companies are cutting uh, corners in some cases to reduce their costs because of the economic pressures that they're under. But as a result, they're getting less out of their ERP systems. Uh, in addition, just under half or 40% experience an operational disruption of some sort at go live. And the satisfaction level or, or the level of the percentage of companies that are unsatisfied is right around 30% for both executives and employees. Now, another metric we looked at is comparing on-premise ERP to uh, SaaS or software as a service solutions. And we can see that uh, as been covered in the media, uh, SaaS solutions are implemented in significantly less time on average uh, compared to on-premise. Uh, the average implementation duration is just under 12 months for SaaS solutions and just over 18 months for on-premise solutions. And again, these are for solutions of all types, companies of all sizes. This is merely an average, and, and we certainly have more data uh, based on industry verticals and company size and whatnot. If we continue to, to compare SaaS solutions to on-premise, uh, we'll see that uh, on-premise is slightly more expensive as a percentage of sales, 6.9% um, versus 6.2% for SaaS. Um, the level of executive satisfaction is statistically exactly the same, right at 71 and 71.5% uh, for SaaS versus on-premise. And where the differences occur and where the downside of SaaS is exposed is when we look at the level of business benefits and the percentage that were implemented within budget. Uh, as you'll see here, uh, on-premise, uh, more companies that implement on-premise experience a higher level of business benefit realization uh, compared to SaaS. So 32% of on-premise implementations 
uh, deliver at least half of the business benefits that were expected, whereas SaaS solutions are only only deliver that level of benefits for 23% of organizations. Uh, the bi- even bigger delta is when we look at budget. Uh, SaaS solutions are implemented uh, within their expected budgets less than 30% of the time, whereas on-premise solutions are closer to half. And uh, part of this is because of there, there's so much hype right now in the industry marketplace and so much uh, misguided uh, writings and discussions about the ease of uh, implementing SaaS and the, the low cost of ownership of SaaS that a lot of companies have unrealistic expectations about what it's really going to take to get their uh, ERP initiatives done. Now, when we consider organizational change management and the level of change that companies are going through um, during their ERP initiatives, we can see that uh, the economy has created a, a great deal of risk and uncertainty and turbulence within organizations. So companies that are implementing ERP have a, a host of other issues that they're trying to deal with, such as new CEO, new office locations, uh, mergers and acquisitions, layoffs, uh, a poor ability to manage change, and poor communications. And you can see the percentage, the relative percentages of companies that indicated that those were concerns or changes that they were experiencing at the same time uh, that they were going through an ERP implementation. And these numbers demonstrate or illustrate the reasons why organizational change management is so important uh, beyond just simple end user training. There's a there's a lot of change management that needs to go into um, into these ERP initiatives to deal with not only the changes of ERP, but some of the other changes that are happening at the same time and people are dealing with. So in summary, companies in this study are struggling with three key problems, completing their implementations on time, completing their implementations on budget, and realizing business benefits. In fact, what we found is that 72% of organizations in the study experienced at least one of these problems, and 31% realized two or more of these problems. So if we were to consider ERP success and ERP effectiveness as implementing on time, on budget, and delivering expected business benefits, um, what we're saying here is that less than a third of companies are successful uh, and two-thirds experience some type of failure in their ERP implementations. So if we talk about some of the top uh, traits of best-in-class ERP initiatives, there are several, and we actually won't go into a lot of detail here. But the first is to focus on business processes and requirements, not to rush your ERP evaluation process, focus on achieving a healthy ERP return on investment, gaining commitment and buy-in from your company executives, developing a realistic project plan and time frame. And as we discussed, a lot of companies have unrealistic expectations around their plan and budget and time frame. We also want to commit strong project management and resources to the project, ensure adequate organizational change management and training, Limiting software customization is another way to control your costs and make sure that your your software is implemented effectively. And you also wanna carefully understand the advantages and disadvantages of multiple software delivery options. So whether it's SaaS, on-premise, or some type of hybrid, there are gonna be trade-offs, pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses of each of those solutions. And it's important to fully understand and evaluate those, those pros and cons before you make your decision. And then finally, leveraging independent and knowledgeable ERP expertise is very important. Companies like Panorama Consulting do this for a living every day. They know the market very well. Um, They can help you find the right software that's going to actually lower your cost and lower your risk in the long run. And uh, it's certainly also going to uh, make your, your project more.